Hello folks and welcome to Project Sky Shark. Some of you might have been a bit keen to see what it's all about. Well, um, I'll show you. So let's get into the nitty gritty of it. Right, so what you're looking at here is the basis for Project Sky Shark. It's a Lock Precision Shadowhawk PK-34. Uh, it's a brilliant rocket to use because ultimately I want this to be dual deployment. So, we're going to be uh, expanding upon the basic design. You can see I've got a lot of components here. And ultimately, the size of the motor we're going to be using is, um, yeah, this big. It's a Pro 38 6 grain casing. Um, my level 1 means that I can go up to eyes, which means I can do up to a 5 grain in this currently, uh, which is what I'm going to be using. And, yep we are going to be breaking the sound barrier, so that is what this project is going to be all about. And as I say, we're going to be going up really high, so I want dual deployment. A little drogue parachute to come out at Apogee, and then a main parachute, probably around about 700 feet. In order to achieve that, what I've got here, which you can see, is my uh, blue tube, my eBay. I've got a lot of this stuff shipped over from America, and it's all ready to put together. So, without further ado, let's crack on with it. Right, so let's start this build then. We'll uh, get on with the eBay first, which you can see on the right there. This is the 75mm one, which is designed for the lock tubes. Up here, we've got my Perfect Flight Strata Logger, which is going to be used for the dual deployment to set off the cartridges, which you can see here. And then I've just got a few other bits, batteries and a zip tie. Right, let's do this. Right, so next up is to solder my switch, which you can see in the middle there, uh, to the wire, so that I can connect it up to the altimeter. Right, there she is, soldered up, ready to go into the eBay. Right, here it is, a completed eBay, going from left to right. I've got my cartridge in there, obviously there's no black powder in there at the moment, so it's all triple seven, I should say. So it's completely safe. And then the battery, the switch, which is in line with the static port, and then the uh, actual Stratologer unit itself. And just to prove to you that it's working, I shall uh, press the switch here. And you can hear it turns on. And then it says program three. And then it says the altitude that the main is set to come out at, and that's 700 feet it's saying at the moment. There you go. And then it goes on to say the altitude of the last flight. Obviously I haven't done one, so this must have been them testing it in the factory. Uh, it's about 8,120 something. So there you go. And then it goes on to say the voltage of the battery. You can hear that's 9.6 volts. And then it goes beep beep to let me know that the uh, continuity is good for my main parachute deployment. So there you go, she's all working. Yeah, she fits in the rocket nice as well. Brillo. Okay folks, so now the eBay's done, we're gonna move on to the motor mount tube. I've got the main tube at the top there, which you can see from one end to the other. It's quite big. And then I've got the motor centering rings and the motor retainer unit in the middle. Let's put this bad boy together. So here it is, a completed motor mount tube with the uh, retainer on the back and the centering rings as well. So the next step is now to put this into the airframe. Cool. So there we are, the motor mount tube installed in the airframe and the retainer on the back. Right, so now I'm going to sand my fins to make the leading edges aerodynamic, a bit more elliptical uh, to get the best aerodynamic performance I can. Right, so here you can see I've done the fin on the left and I'm yet to do the fin on the right. You can see it's a much smoother leading edge on this uh, fin right here. Uh, if you look down it, uh, compared to obviously this other fin here, which you can see is an absolutely dead straight edge. And this can reduce the drag by up to 85%. Cool. Okay, folks, so you can see I've finished sanding my fins, all four of them. I've got them down here. 
I'll just uh, show you it in the light there you can see as I uh, move it around the way the fin is uh, curved on the leading edges now and I've done that uh, on the back as well so that's going to increase my uh, efficiency a lot up to 85% less fin drag as I uh, already mentioned okay folks now that they're all rounded it's time to use the wood filler to make the surface nice and smooth nice and aerodynamic and get a good finish for the paint there we go folks the finished result they've been filled with wood filler so now they're going to be nice and aerodynamic and nice and smooth to put the paint on right so now I'm sanding my uh, nose cone smooth you can see this horrible ridge here on the top and uh, the other side of it yeah has now been sanded as uh, smooth as possible you can see a slight crease there but that'll disappear with some primer so awesome so I've drilled and epoxied an eyeball onto the nose cone for added strength. So whilst I wait for my uh, fins to flatten so I know that they're dead straight, I'm going to uh, rig up the top section of the rocket here with my main parachute, that's the purple thing, fire blanket, some Kevlar shock cord and a GPS tracking unit. Here we are, so I've got my GPS and altimeter 2 on the nose cone which is connected by a bit of cord to the parachute and then that cord goes into the tube where I've got a fire retardant blanket and connects to the bulkhead on my eBay. Excellent! Right, so as I was aware the payload section is fairly tight so I've had a bit of a redesign uh, which is pretty normal for a project like this so I decided I'm going to hang my GPS off of the uh, bottom here of the eBay into the main airframe section and I'm also going to have my audio alarm on that side as well. Next up is to install the fins. There we are the fins glued onto the airframe. Next to install the drogue chute. There we go folks all rigged together. Right so that's the basic build finished as you can see right here and the next job is going to be painting her. Yeah she's looking pretty good. Righty ho folks so I, uh, I put in the hours and I put in the effort and here's the results of Sky Shark's paint job. There you go you can see it there looking very mean and very angry. Grrr, ready to attack the sky. Um, so as you can see I've got it um, all done here and I've put some static port stickers on the side here as well as the next job is going to be um, drilling all the holes and putting on the launch lugs and installing the shear pins and such like. Um, so I'll do that next. There we go, the hole drilled in my static port. Now I'm installing my rail buttons. Right folks, here you can see I've installed my launch lugs, there's one at the bottom and this other one here further up, so you can see them both there like that. And now moving down, I've also installed some removable bolts into the top section, which is holding my eBay to the top part of the rocket, the payload section, uh, which contains the main parachute so it doesn't separate and I can then still remove the section to uh, get up my eBay and all the electronic charges and stuff. Right, so the next mission is to install the shear pins in the nose cone, right up here. So the shear pins in and finished and that completes the build. The next bit is going to be testing it, uh, testing the dual deployment system. So that's sure to be good fun. Okay, so now I've got my 777, uh, which is what I'm going to be using as a black powder substitute. Uh, in the UK, this is officially classed as a propellant, so it's slightly easier to get hold of. The downside to that, I suppose, is the fact that you have to take a few extra steps with it, um, which is why I've got the electrical tape right here, which you can see. And then moving up to the rocket, you can see I've got my canister here. Uh, which has got a little over one and a quarter grams worth of black, uh, sorry, triple seven in it, which is what I worked out uh, on the calculator on the internet with uh, quite a few windings of electrical tape. 
That's also, as you can see, padded down with uh, a bit of towel to keep it against the igniter so it goes off. Right, a little apprehensive, but let's go and test this to make sure it works. Mr. Thrust Senior. It's Dad Thrust, who has just installed this lovely light, actually. He's done a fantastic job and is going to be my um, glamorous assistant <laughs> for our, our little test, which uh, we've got down here. So you can see I've got my rocket on uh, True Blue Chelsea towel um, up against the wall so it doesn't shoot backwards or anything nasty like that. Um, some high speed camera action and a vacuum cleaner. <laughs> uh, so the idea is that I hold the vacuum cleaner over my hole here which sucks the air out of the eBay. The altimeter alti thinks it's going up. Then I'll take it away, thinks it's coming back down again and when it thinks it's at 700 feet in theory the nose cone here should fly off. Hmm, let's see if it happens. Arming. Okay, so those double beeps mean that we've got good continuity for the main deployment. So let's uh, do this test. So this time we've got more black powder in right up to the top. So let's see if it works. So I've made a few amendments, I've removed some of the cord from the payload section so there's less resistance and I've also not taped up the top which is a bit controversial but we think that might have a lot to do with it. So let's give it a go. Ho, folks as you can see it worked there it is the nose cones come all the way out over here um, that was using a bit more black powder to make sure it went so uh, that was 2.5 grams which is a bit extreme for this but now I know it works I'll uh, use two for the actual flights and that should work beautifully so that completes the build and test the next video will be of its made of flight. I uh, hope you're enjoying Project Sky Shark so far. And if you like what you see, don't forget to rate, comment, and subscribe. Thank you very much for watching. I'll see you next time. Yeah.